Hello and praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Tony McGee, and I'm so blessed to serve as a senior pastor of Zion Hope Church, located on the east side of Indianapolis. On behalf of myself, Lady Kim, and the entire Zion Hope Church family, I want to thank you for visiting with us today. At Zion Hope, our mission is to advance the kingdom of God through effective evangelism, discipleship, and service. Our vision is to be a church that loves, a church that grows, and a church that serves. If you'd like to learn more about our ministry and how we impact our community, you can check us out on our website, www.zionhopechurch.org. You can also connect with us through our Zion Hope Church Facebook page, or you can connect with us on the Zion Hope Church YouTube channel. If you do not currently have a church home, why don't you give prayerful consideration to being part of the Zion Hope family? I would love to be able to serve as your pastor. My prayer is that you will continue to come again and visit us soon. Hope is here, hope is now, and there is hope for your future. I hope to see you at the Hope, Zion Hope. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may heaven smile upon you. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Sunday. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. This is Palm Sunday, and we ought to praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Just like the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his what? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So right now, go ahead and give the Lord your best praise on this Palm Sunday. This is the day that God has for you to praise him. If God has done anything for you, go ahead and praise him. If God has opened doors, Praise him. If God has moved mountains, praise him. If he's made a way, if he's provided and protected, go ahead and praise him right now in your own way. My name is Tony McGee, and I'm the pastor of Zion Hope Church located here in the city of Indianapolis. I want to welcome you to our online worship service. Please make sure that you go and you follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, on Twitter. Follow us and please, please, please go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Zion Hope Church. And you know what? As you're watching today, as you're watching, go ahead and start a watch party. Go ahead and start a watch party. If you've got um, something that you want to share with everyone, say, hey, I got Zion Hope Church and I'm going to share this service with you. So go ahead and share your watch party uh, with your family and your friends. Type in comments, type in praise emojis, uh, hands that are being praising God, hands that are being put together, hands that are praying, whatever it is. Go ahead and let us know that you're here, that you're watching, that you're engaged and that you are being blessed by the service because we want to hear from you. We want to make sure that we hear from you. Well, guess what? This is day 40 of our 40 days of prayer and fasting. This is day 40 and you made it. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You made it. And y'all, I know it wasn't easy, but with God's help, you made it. With God's help, you made it. During this 40 days, my prayer is, is that each of us was able to develop a more intimate relationship with God. These 40 days, they were to be personal, and this was to be a special encounter between you and between your Creator, God. That's what this was. It was to be a deeply personal encounter between you and God. Now that you've been revived and you've been refreshed and now that you've been renewed, you can be able to now build upon that experience and become more intimate in your walk with him. And guess what? You can be able to become intimate with him every single day of your life because you've already did it for 40 days. And I want you to know that if things have not been going well for you, hang on in there because I promise you things are going to turn around for you. I promise you that things are going to get better. God is going to be with you every step of the way, no matter what you have to go through. You just keep your faith and your trust in him, trusting in him with all your heart, leaning not into your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and God's going to direct your path. Y'all, it's time for us to get ready to, to get our praise and worship on. 
And as we're getting ready to get our praise and worship on, and our praise team is going to bless us, I want us to prepare to hear a message on Palm Sunday. Because I believe that um, it's very important for us to understand the significance of Palm Sunday and what it means for us today. And then after the message, I need you to stay online because as you keep watching after the message, there's an important information that you're going to receive about how to register for our Resurrection Sunday praise at the Hope Parking Lot service that's going to be at 11 o'clock next, uh, next Sunday. So please make sure you stay tuned in. Stay tuned in after the sermon so that you can get information on how you can register for our Resurrection Sunday service that's going to be here live at the Hope in the parking lot. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is a good God and worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Thy our God. Lord, we thank you for one more day, Lord, how we praise and magnify your holy and righteous name. Let us pray. Praise Heavenly Father. Lord, it's once again you allowed us to come into your house of worship, and we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for being a mighty good God. We thank you for being a God that lead, guide, and direct, Lord. We thank you for saving our sin sick soul. Bless us in this worship experience, Lord. Be with the praise team. Be with the musicians, Lord. Touch everyone that is joining in in this worship experience. Lord, we love you. We adore you, and we declare we can't make this journey without you. It's in the precious and matchless name of Jesus we do pray. And all agreed said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. God, we honor you this morning for you are a good, good father. So wherever you are, let your room become your sanctuary and let's worship and praise God this morning. Amen. 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 Woo! All right. Yeah. 
regulator and he'll be there late in the midnight hour so we just want to come in corporate praise and worship to say thank you for being a way maker and we love you hallelujah
Someone said he's a bridge over troubled water. Yes. He's our bread when we're hungry. He's our waters when we're thirsty. Amen. 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 We'd like to thank you for tuning in to our online service. On behalf of Pastor Tony McGee and Lady Kim and their entire Zion Hope family, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We're on a mission here at Zion Hope, and our mission is to advance the kingdom of God through effective evangelism, discipleship, and service. And our vision is, here at The Hope, is to love, grow, and to serve. We ought to love ye one another. Amen? Amen. Not only should we love one another, we should study the Word of God so we can grow in the Word of God. And we are the hands and feet of Christ. We be in ministry because ministry meets the needs of others. Amen. Amen. It's prayer time, y'all. I pray that we will continue to stay prayerful in times like this because we need God in our life. And the one of the ways we ask God to come into our life is through prayer. Amen? Amen. At this time, let us take an attitude of prayer. Praise Heavenly Father. Lord, it's once again we come before you humble as we know how. Lord, our head is bowed down, but our heart is lifted up. We call upon you today, Lord, because we have no other God to call upon. There's no one quite like you. We searched all over, and we just couldn't find nobody. There's nobody quite like you. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right mind, a portion of our health and strength. Thank you for allowing us to come here to worship you in spirit and in truth. 
Because in your word, you said you seek such to worship you. Lord, we ask that you be in the midst, Lord. We ask that you bless the preach word. Continue to be with our pastor. Prop him up on every leaning side. Lord, we pray that you will continue to give him preaching power, teaching power, loving power, Lord. Encourage his heart, Lord, so that your word may go forth and do exactly what it's supposed to do. Bless Lady Kim. Continue to strengthen her. Prop her up on every leaning side. Granted what she's standing in need of. Bless his kids. Bless Sister Bates. Bless his extended family. Lord, don't forget our Zion Hope family. For we need you. And we declare we can't make this journey without you. Lord, we continue, even during these times, that we continue to be a church that's sitting on a hill that cannot be hid. That we may let our light shine before men that they may see our works and glorify you which are in heaven. Now, Lord, we have sinned and fell short of your glory. But you said in your words, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we ask that you bless this sin-sick world. Lord, we pray that they will surrender to your will and your way. Lord, we pray that somebody might be saved through your word. Somebody might be saved through our action, Lord. We ask that you strengthen us, for we need you, and we can't make it without you. That somebody feel like throwing in the towel, Lord, but we pray that they might hold on. Bless the sick that is among us. Touch those that are going through difficult times, Lord. We pray that you heal them where they need to be healed. Encourage them where they need to be encouraged, Lord. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together one more time because we could be dead and in our graves, but you lied our golden rise and roll on a little while longer, and we just want to say thank you. Lord, continue to bless every ministry of the church. Bless our preparation in serving you. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to serve you as you had called us to do. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory, knowing that you're worthy to be praised. It's in the priceless and matchless name of Jesus we do pray. And all agreed said, amen. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your love, and your tender mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the songs that have been sang. Thank you for the keys that have been played. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers that have been prayed. Now, Lord, we need to hear a word from you. I pray that Tony will be completely removed so that your Holy Spirit might speak through me. I pray that we might understand the importance of Palm Sunday and what it means for us as believers and how we are now to operate with this information that you're giving to us. I pray that our lives will be changed and transformed all for the better and you'll get the praise, you'll get the glory, and Lord, you already have the honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. And it reads, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you'll find a donkey tied there, with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and they did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey um, and the coat and placed their cloaks on them. And Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from trees and spread them along the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that follow, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the son of David. Bless this he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, I know that this week, um, many schools are on spring break, 
As a matter of fact, um, my kids, they're on spring break right now. They're on, ki- they're on spring break now. And y'all, also today, it's my birthday. And I'm so grateful to the Lord that he's allowed me the privilege of being able to be his child and to be used by him and giving me the blessing of 47 years of life here on this earth. So I'm so thankful to him for this great day. However, today is not about spring break. And today certainly is not about my birthday. Today is Palm Sunday. And the scriptures that we just read is one of Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. This is a very, very special day for those of us who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And you know what? Today, it should have a a very different and a deeper meaning to us as Christians. And that's why I want to talk to us today about what is Palm Sunday? What is Palm Sunday? Well, Palm Sunday, it's the last Sunday in Lent. And in Palm Sunday, it's the Sunday that's right before Easter, right before Resurrection Sunday. Palm Sunday, it's the the beginning of what's known as Holy Week. And Holy Week is the most important week of the year for us as believers. Holy Week, it begins with Palm Sunday, and then it culminates and it celebrates the, the Jesus being raised from the dead on Resurrection Sunday. Holy Week takes us through through the days and through the process in which Jesus was betrayed, when Jesus was wrongly convicted, when he was sentenced to die the most humiliating, horrific death on the cross so that he can restore the broken relationship and fellowship that existed between God, the creator and his creation, mankind. So Palm Sunday is is the beginning of, of Holy Week. And some of you may be sitting there and asking, Why does the day change every year? Why is Palm Sunday not the same every single year? Well, the date changes each year because the date of Easter changes in relation to the Jewish holiday of Passover. So in 2019, 2019, Palm Sunday was on April the 14th. Then in accordance to the Jewish calendar and the holy holiday of Passover in 2020, April 5th was the year. And now today, on March 28th, it's Palm Sunday. Churches across the world are going to give out palm branches like the ones you see behind them to to the members because they're to recreate and to remember the celebration of Jesus' final arrival into Jerusalem when they were honoring him as king and as their Messiah. In the text that we read earlier, we find what, what happened on this Palm Sunday morning. Jesus, he he rode a young donkey into Jerusalem and was greeted by a large crowd with palm branches and people shouting. Those in the crowd, they they put their their coats and, and palm branches on the ground as Jesus was passing by. And I know some of you may be asking this question. Why? Why did did the people who were gathered around in the crowd, why did they lay their coats and palm branches on the ground on Palm Sunday? Why did they do this? Well, it's important for us to know that the laying of their coats on the ground and palm branches on the ground, that was um, a symbolic way for the people to be able to treat Jesus as their king. The the people who were who were in the crowd, um, they were tired of being oppressed by the Roman Empire. They were tired of being suppressed by the Roman Empire and they were tired of being depressed because of the Roman Empire. And now Jesus, their king, Jesus, their king was arriving. So they showed honor and respect for him. They had hoped that Jesus would come and that he would overthrow the whole evil system of the Roman Empire and the Roman government. And you know what? The custom of a king or of a conquering ruler was when they entered into the city that the people would create a carpet by putting their coats and branches on the ground because they wanted to welcome them in. And that's where we get the phrase rolling out the red carpet. We get it from that. Y'all, you know, when we welcome a celebrity or we welcome an important guest into our house or on in Hollywood, they roll out the what? the red carpet, because an important guest is coming. They get the royal treatment because they're an important guest. 
People are willing to, to strip themselves of things that are seemingly valuable. They're willing to lay them aside because they're welcoming the king and they're welcoming and worshiping their leader. Now, the question that I have for you on this Palm Sunday is this. The question I have for you is, are you willing to lay aside those things that are seemingly valuable to you? Are you willing to strip yourself of those things and lay them on the ground in preparation for Jesus to be able to enter into not Jerusalem, but into your heart? Because in order for the king, for King Jesus to enter into your heart, you must be stripped of anything that could take away his opportunity to be Lord in your life. This is the time for you to, to welcome Jesus in by, by worshiping him. This is the time for you to welcome him and worship him. Well, well, pastor, how do I do that? Y'all, you can worship him by laying some things to the side. That old self, lay it to the side. That old attitude, lay it to the side. That old behavior, lay it to the side. That old nature, lay it to the side. That old way of walking and talking and thinking and communicating, those old ways of the old self, lay them to the side. And when you lay them to the side, lay them at the feet of Jesus so that Jesus is able to enter into your heart. Some of you may be saying, well, Pastor T., I understand that. And I got to lay some things aside, but but I'm tripped out because I need to know what the significance of Jesus riding in on a donkey is on Palm Sunday. I know I got to lay some things to the side, but what's the significance of Jesus riding in on a donkey? Jesus, he traveled to Jerusalem and he traveled on a donkey. John 12 and 13 says that the people were saying, blessed is the king of Israel. Then in Mark chapter 11, verse 10 it quotes them cheering, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Now, conquering kings, they would normally ride in in chariots that were laced with gold and had 22 inch rims or doves that they were sitting on. They, they would have their drip on because they were the king. And, and in some cases, they didn't come in um, in a whip. They didn't come in in a chariot. What they did, they came riding this beautiful stallion, this beautiful, magnificent horse. They were earthly kings, and earthly kings needed to ride in on chariots, or they needed to come in on magnificent horses. Why? Why did they come in like that? Because these earthly kings, they represented victory. That They were displaying the fact that, that after the war was over, that they were the ones who were victorious. But Jesus... King Jesus, he rode in on a donkey. Well, why did King Jesus ride in on a donkey? Because, y'all, Jesus, he wasn't an ordinary king. He didn't ride in on a donkey because he wasn't an ordinary king. There was nothing ordinary about Jesus at all. His kingdom was not limited by what was here on earth. His kingdom wasn't temporary, and it wasn't only for a short amount of time. Y'all, Jesus' kingdom was not limited to what people expected of him or thought about him on earth or even how they experienced him. His kingdom was much more than that. His kingdom was that of heaven, and his kingdom was that of earth. Jesus' kingdom is eternal, and his kingdom is to last forever. He is not an ordinary king. And since Jesus was not a normal, ordinary king, and since he didn't need to impress anyone by what he rolled in on, since he didn't need to brag about who he was, and since he didn't have to try to impress anyone by rolling in on a chariot or coming with an entourage and having a whole bunch of magnificent horses, Jesus said, I'm riding in on a donkey. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm not your ordinary king. I'm not your normal king. And, and to make sure that the readers realize this, each of the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each of them in their own writings, they talk about Jesus riding in on what? Riding in on a horse. Because Jesus already had the power. He didn't have to try and make power up. Jesus is not your ordinary king. And on this Palm Sunday, y'all, I want you to know this. I want you to know that Jesus is not your ordinary king. 
See, see ordinary kings, they, they seek power and prestige and, and possessions and position. But Jesus didn't seek power because he had all power. He was meek and he was humble, and that's what set him apart. Ordinary kings, y'all, they would force people to get their way. But King Jesus, y'all, he leads people and doesn't force them. Why? Because he is the way. Ordinary kings make, make you fear them, but, but Jesus came to take away your fear. He doesn't want you to be fearful. He wants you to be fearless. Ordinary kings, they will operate in times and try to pe make people hate, but Jesus he operates out of love. Y'all, I just want you to know that King Jesus, he wasn't an ordinary king. And since he wasn't an ordinary king, he didn't come in an ordinary way. As a matter of fact, the gospel writers record Jesus' specific instructions to his disciples to go to a village where they would find a donkey with her coat beside her. They, they were told to untie them both. We just read both the animals and bring them back to, to Jesus. Then in Matthew 21, verses 4 and 5, y'all, this explains that this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Zechariah. Matthew 21 and 5 says, so that this was done so that the say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the fall of a donkey. See, the prophecy it shows that Jesus was not an ordinary king. Well, well Pastor T, I, I understand that, that Jesus wasn't an ordinary king. I get that now. But, but there's still some questions that, that's troubling me right now. Because in, in verse 9, it says that the crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed him shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The, the text says Hosanna in, in the highest. So I understand that, that Jesus was humble and meek, but, but what does Hosanna mean? I don't understand that, especially during Palm Sunday. What does this mean, Pastor? Y'all, Hosanna, it means please save us. Hosanna, it means please save us. And, and the Greek word Hosanna, it's based off of two Hebrew words. And the first Hebrew word is yasha. And yasha, it means to save or deliver. So yasha, it means that you are to be saved or, or it means to, to be delivered. That's yasha. The second word is ana. And that second word ana means to, to beg you or to say please. So Anna means um, I beg you or it means plead. So in verse nine, when Jesus says, when they say Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. What the people are actually doing is quoting Psalms 118 verses 25 and 26. They're quoting this when Jesus comes in. Then they're saying, save us, we pray. O Lord, O Lord. We pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So what were they doing, Pastor? They were calling out to the king, King Jesus. And they were saying, King Jesus, save me. They were calling out to, to the king. And they were asking their king to be the one to grant them success. Y'all, this is a great lesson for you and a great lesson for me on this Palm Sunday because as we lay aside some things in our lives so that we can be able to be prepared for Jesus to enter in our hearts, we also need to step back and say, Jesus, save us. I understand that we oftentimes call for others for help. I understand that you've called on your family and you've called on your friends. I understand that we call on those in leadership and say, I need you to help me. Come and help me right now. We call for help from the president, from senators, from congressmen, from congresswomen, from governors, mayors, and even elected city officials. We call on help and say, doctor, please save me. Nurses, please watch over me and other professionals. But y'all today, 
on this Palm Sunday, I want you to know there's only one name you need to call on, and that name is Jesus, because it's King Jesus who is able to save us. It's King Jesus who is able to heal us. It's King Jesus who is able to deliver us. It's King Jesus who is able to set you free. It's nobody else but King Jesus, because Jesus can turn things around. Jesus, he can go and open up doors. Jesus, he can go and move mountains. Y'all, it's King Jesus. So right now, no matter where you are or whatever you're going through, I want you to call on the name of King Jesus because there's no name that's above his name. Y'all, you got to call on King Jesus. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there's nothing that is too hard for him. There's nothing that is impossible with God. There's nothing that he's not able to do. There's no mountain that he cannot help you to climb. There's no valley that he can't come and snatch you out of. There's no addiction that he cannot break you from. There's no chain that can keep you in bondage if you would just call on King Jesus. There's no disease that he's not able to heal. He is King Jesus and he wants to reign and rule in your life. And he wants to do it today. Today is the day for you to call on King Jesus. What is Palm Sunday? It's a celebration because the king of kings was making a triumphal entry, not just into Jerusalem, but into your heart. And today, won't you let Jesus into your heart? Lay some things to the side. Roll out the red carpet for him and let him enter into your heart. Call on him to save you and he will give you success. Jesus, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are exalted bound all names. You are worthy of our praise. You are mighty to save. Nothing is too hard for you. You've defeated death and you've even defeated the grave. We do not have to fear anymore, Jesus. Because of you, we know we're victorious. Your kingdom is eternal and it's forever. Help us right now to see you how you are, victorious yet meek, powerful yet loving, patient yet just. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to feel and understand you and your kingdom. Help us to trust you in, our, in your sovereignty. Help us to trust you and give you authority for our lives. Help us not to turn our backs on you when things don't go the way that we want them to do. Give us the strength that we need and the endurance as we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your humility. Thank you for your eternal reign. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are the only sovereign one, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Jesus wants to come into your heart right now. Jesus wants to come into your heart. Will you allow him to come in right now? Will you allow him to come in? You may have to lay some things to the side, and that's okay. Lay them to the side and open up yourself so Jesus can walk into your heart. All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved for all eternity. You'll be saved. And as Jesus is in your heart, you'll be filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing that you won't be able to accomplish as you continue to seek God and His will for your life. God has plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And today is the day for you to allow Him into your life so that then He can do what He wants to do in your life. We don't want you to make this journey by yourself. Here at Zion Hope Church, we want to come alongside you. So you can give us a call, 317-547-4387. You can give us a call, and we'll come alongside you. You can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Go ahead and shoot us a line. Or you can email us at info at zionhopechurch.org. We want to make sure that we're able to come along and they're able to be there for you. Turning your life over to Jesus is the best decision that you can ever make. It's the best decision you can ever make. 
Now I have a special announcement for you. Next Sunday, next Sunday at 11 a.m., we're going to have a worship service right here at Zion Hope Church, 5950 East 46th Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. 46 in Arlington is where we're at, right behind the gas station. An outdoor service, outdoor service. The gates are going to open at 10, 15 a.m. At 10, 15 a.m. I need you to listen for some very important information. If you're going to sit in the reserved seating, if you're going to sit in reserved seating, I need for you to bring your own lawn chair. Bring your own lawn chair if you're going to sit in the reserved seating. Where you need to park is on the east side. That's where the Kroger parking lot is. Um, that side of our parking lot is where you need to park on the east side of the Zion Hope parking lot. And then you can walk to the designated seated area. If you're not going to be seated and you're staying in your car, you will be directed to where you can go. We will have an FM radio station for you to tune into, so you'll be able to listen to the service the entire time. We're looking forward to celebrating our Savior. We're making a comeback, y'all, and this is the first step of that. Just as Jesus made a comeback after death, we're making a comeback after the death of COVID, and God has got some amazing things in store for our church. So please make sure that you come. I need you to also pre-register so that we can make proper accommodations. Look, if you are not on our email list, then you need to email us at info at zionhopechurch.org or go ahead and shoot us something on Facebook and give us your email address. We're also going to have the link that's on our Facebook page so you can be able to download the link. You can fill out the questionnaire and you can pre-register. We need everyone to pre-register. Let us know whether you're sitting in the reserve seating or whether you're going to be staying in your car. And we also need to know the number of individuals that will be with you. So that information will be available. You'll be able to get it. There's an email being sent out and you can also get it on our website and also get that information so that you can register on our Facebook page. We're looking forward to seeing all of you on this first Sunday as we make a comeback. Thank you for tuning in. God is going to do some amazing things and I hope to see you I hope to see you on Resurrection Sunday in live, in person, at the church outdoors, y'all. If this uh, ministry has been a blessing to you, uh, you can send your tithes and your offering to Zion Hope Church, 5950 East 46th Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46226. Or you can be able to download the Givelify app, select Zion Hope Baptist Church as your church. There's a picture of me. You can give securely on Givelify. Or you can go to our website, zionhopechurch.org also you can drop them off at the church on wednesday between 11 a.m and 2 p.m if you want to drop them off we thank you for your gifts because of what you're doing we've been able to feed so many families once again even on this week we're just able to feed so many families because you are continuing to give and because you are giving, God is allowing us to be able to do some awesome things in ministry. And I'm so grateful for every gift that's been given to us so that we can continue to advance his kingdom. Have a wonderful and a blessed week. Remember, God loves you. I love you. There's nothing that you can do about it. There's hope for today. There's hope for your future because God's hands are on people everywhere. Love you much. Pastor T. Have a blessed week. See you Resurrection Sunday.